Boston Celtics blow game one. Yeah, James Harden dropped 45, but that's not where they lost this game. It's the other guys who beat them. And it's just another disappointing performance when they had it right there in the palm of their hand. I'll talk about it right now on the Lockdown Celtics podcast. Be ever ready. Recognize the city of champs. Boston, baby, we do what you can. Locked on number 18, Tatum and Brown, J team. Step back, we gon' wet that and slay teams. Of course, the Celtics, who else could it be? Screaming like KG with the Larry OB. Corrales above average, assessing the team status. Best daily pod, no cap, salary matching. Clutch like Bird to DJ, keep John on replay. Primetime, gapping up the truth on the sideline. Rain and Jays, how it started, raising banners, how we finished. Locked on Celtics pod, home of the winners. B. Hey, welcome back to the Lockdown Celtics Podcast right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it's your team every day, and I'm here for you every day with a free, fresh podcast dropped directly to your device. So hop on to whatever, you're, whatever app you're using to listen to podcasts. Subscribe if you're new, if you're here to commiserate with me uh, for the first time. Welcome aboard, regular listeners. Welcome back. We know this spot very, very well. Uh, also, watch the show on YouTube if you'd like. You can see that I'm here at the TD Garden. It just past two in the morning here, about 20 past two in the morning. Uh, empty garden, but the lights are on. It's being cleaned out. Uh, and thanks to the Bruins blowing it, they're, they're not breaking this thing down. So I get the podcast out here from the arena. I'm John Corrales. I used to play once upon a time. Now I cover the Celtics for Boston Sports Journal. Today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked On NBA for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Uh, Boston Celtics, I mean, they they blew this game. Not 119, 115 loss to the Sixers. And uh, obviously, the big story of this game is James Harden, 45 points, uh, seven of 17 of 30 shooting, seven of 14 from, from three. Uh, amazingly, 45 points, only four free throws for James Harden. So that's. That's an amazing kind of uh, stat to me. Usually when he drops 45, he's 15 of them come from the free throw line. But, hey, kudos to James Harden. Turn back the clock. Uh, but that's not where the Celtics lost this game. Uh, I think let, let's just start here. Let's just start with where they messed this up because I think the the defense, the way they played this defense, so No, obviously no Joel Embiid in this game. No Joel Embiid means this is a hardened centric off- offense. They go small. They spread the floor. They try to attack. Uh, much like the Celtics play, it's actually, uh, they match up a little bit better with the Celtics without Joel Embiid than, than with Joel Embiid because if they had Embiid, then there's no way Harden gets 30 shots. There's no way he gets 30 field goal attempts. So the game changes a lot. They play a different style with uh, Embiid out there. It's a style that's actually more conducive to the Celtics defensively. With, with Harden out there, I think what the Celtics did, I think they made a mistake. I think they they overreacted. And and after the game, Malcolm Brogdon, uh, I think he was pissed off. I think Brogdon was pissed off that the Celtics were doubling as much as they were on Harden. And every once in a while, sure, you got to throw one every once in a while. But what the Celtics were doing, I think they were making reads and every once in a while they threw uh, a player decide, hey, I'm going to go double Harden. And what we saw over and over again was when that happened, especially if it was a player making a read, on the back side of it, there was a little bit of confusion. Uh, guys were left open. The, there's one play that stands out at the very end of the half where uh, Tobias Harris got a three-pointer, where Smart comes over to double Harden and Harden, it, it's not a tight double double team. Harden gets a little pocket pass. I forget who it was at the free throw line. And that guy turns and fired to Tobias Harris. And that was a wide, wide, wide open three. I mean, wide open three. No one within 10 feet of him. Three-pointer. And he drained it. Without cohesion behind what happened uh, on the double team, the Sixers got a ton of open three-pointers. They shot 17 of 38 from three uh, in this game. And Harris killed them with a couple. 
Uh, they got Niang with one late in the game, but it was DeAnthony Melton who had 17 points, I think 14 at the half. There was a stretch in the second quarter. This is where the game really, truly changed. The Celtics were up 12, and there were three minutes or so to go. And they had an opportunity. You're up 12. This is, we talk about it all the time on the podcast. Finish strong. Finish these quarters strong. And if you can do that, you're going to go into the next quarter, the next half with momentum, and you're going to be able to build on that. But instead of finishing the quarter strong over the last three minutes, the Celtics were outscored to a point where they only went into the half up three. Melton had a couple of three-pointers. He he was five of six. I think it was five of five in the first half. So two of those three-pointers came in that stretch. It's a critical stretch because if the Celtics don't give up those three-pointers and they go into the half up 20, there's, there's a little bit more of a comfort level there. And and I, look, I know exactly what you're saying here, and I, I can hear myself as I'm saying it. You don't want the Celtics to be too comfortable because you know they're going to blow that lead. They can't handle prosperity. But still, you'd rather be up 20 than up three going into the third quarter. Melton, and uh, they got a couple of buckets from Paul Reed in that stretch, but Melton especially, hitting those three-pointers – Instead of the Celtics going into the half up 20 and then kind of coasting from there and changing the dynamic of the game, to go up, to go into the half up three, they scored 66 points. They gave up 63 at the half. That's that's where this game was lost because that gave Philly the opportunity to hang around. That gave Philly the opportunity to get that um, the, the late buckets – from James Harden that gave Philly the chance to hang around and be uh, in a position to steal this game. And they did, they stole this game. I think that, I mean, they outplayed the Celtics that let me be clear. They outplayed the Celtics here, but the Celtics gave up way too many opportunities, clean, open looks, how was this game lost? Where was this game lost? You look at the box score. The Sixers took 14 more shots than the Celtics. The Sixers made seven more three-pointers than the Celtics. So seven more three-pointers, that's uh, 21 points there. Now, they only won by four. So the Celtics were able to win the points in the paint battle by a lot, 66 to 42. The Celtics won the free throw battle, 17 to 12. But those three pointers are a big difference right there. That's a big difference maker. And the turnovers that allowed the the, the, the Sixers to uh, get those extra opportunities. And if you don't turn the ball over, if you protect the ball, then the you have the opportunity to, you get the you get the, the buckets you get the shot opportunities and instead of giving up 89 ba- uh shots to them maybe you give up 80 shots and those nine a bunch of those nines go to you and you get you get 80 shots and if the shots are equal then the Celtics win this game so the possession battle the margins that we talk about they lost the turnover battle they lost the possession battle they lost this game so Let's take a second here. We'll dive more into uh, the missed opportunity here. What Al Horford said uh, in that late stretch, the le- the last three minutes of the game where the Celtics just completely fell apart. Uh, first, today's show is brought to you by Game Time. The Game Time app gives you last minute tickets. Whoops, there we go the last minute tickets that you're looking for uh, and at um, amazing prices. Flash deals on these last minute tickets. Easy to find and buy these tickets for any event in the in your area, whether you're in Boston or somewhere else. You don't have to plan months in advance. Maybe you just decided, hey, let's decide, let's go to this game. There are plenty of tickets available for this game and there, there might be more for game two. Uh, so you can hop onto the game time app and check it out. If 
you find tickets in the same section or row and row for less, Game Time gets you 110% of the difference. They'll credit you 110% of the difference. You can get an image from your seat so you know exactly what your view is going to be. And it takes like two taps. Boom, you're all set. Tickets are sent directly to your phone so you don't have to dig through your email. You're going to get these last-minute seats. You're going to pay less than a lot of the competition. And it really, it's not just sports. If you want to go to a, a theater show, lots of great stuff, especially around Boston in the theater district, comedy show, uh, a concert, something like that. It's all there on the Game Time app with killer deals. So download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code LOCKEDONNBA for 20% off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code Locked On NBA for $20 off. $20 off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. I want to thank you for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow to I'll rewatch the game and, and dive a little bit more into this. Malcolm Brogdon was pissed off about the, the, um, the double team, saying you don't have to double team all the time um play them he, he wants to play hard and straight up this is a real missed opportunity and they're going to have this opportunity to play hard and again in in this in this next game because i if i'm the sixers i don't play joel and bead in game two the celtics continue to do the sixers some favors when it comes to joel and bead think about if the celtics were able to close out the the hawks in five this would be game two that I'm talking about. Instead, it's game one. And 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 Bede obviously missed this game. So he would have guaranteed missed the first two games. They would have they would have put a lot of pressure on Embiid to either come back and play, or it just would have not worked out. They would we would be heading into a game three with with however that series would have gone at that point. Who knows how differently it would have gone if the Celtics were uh, were able to close out the Hawks. But the point is, they gave Embiid a couple extra days there instead of game one being on Saturday. Game one is now Monday. Now with this win for the Sixers, the Celtics, if I'm the Sixers, I say, you know what? I'm going to rest Embiid. We've accomplished our mission. Go to Boston, steal one of these two games, even if you lose game two. And I'm not saying you want to punt on a, a playoff game, but – you can go in there and say, hey, we've proven we can win. We've got a ton of confidence. Guys like Melton, guys like Harris, you know, Tucker didn't even take a shot, but he's got confidence just by proxy. Uh, Maxi has confidence. He hasn't had a ton of success against Boston, but here he is with a 26-point game. Paul Reed has confidence because he had uh, a bunch of offensive rebounds. He had four offensive rebounds, 13 overall. These guys can now say, hey, you know what? Even if we lose game two, and they do have the confidence that they can win game two. Even if we lose, we've now got home court. So let's just let's just let Joel sit. And if he can come back in game three, great. Now we have home court advantage. All we need is to just win our home games and we're fine. Sixers and seven. That's that's not exactly where the Celtics want this series to be they don't want to have the Sixers have this confidence but once again the Celtics have kind of I don't know relaxed I didn't think that they relaxed necessarily but Al Horford after the game said he said flat out and we didn't ask him this he said flat out I feel like Joel not being there played a part and you know Al's not going to BS anybody. I was not going to lie about that. He doesn't want that to be the case, but he said it. And other guys can deny it, but he said it. And whether to whatever extent that that's true, I don't understand how the Celtics can even get to that point here. It's game one of the conference semifinals. If that's actually true, if the Celtics actually relaxed, if the Celtics actually kind of took a step back, I don't want to hear about human nature at this point. I really don't because this is game one of the conference semifinals and it's a long series. So I'm not really too worked up about the fact that they, okay, you lost the game. I said Celtics in six because I knew the Celtics were going to 
botch a game along the way, right? So maybe they got that out of the way early. I know that the, the, the Sixers are going to shoot their way to a win. I mean, maybe this falls into that category as well. They shot 45% from three. So maybe maybe this is their they're shooting their way to a win game. And there's another botch job coming down the road for the Celtics. It's a long series, and the Celtics, look, I would not be surprised if the Celtics won the next three games and then botched game five. That's that's where the Celtics are right now. The Celtics come in here and turn the ball over, some real sloppy turnovers, and give up 20 points off of 16 turnovers. That's You're not going to win a lot of games giving up 20 points off of 16 turnovers. But if they if they feel like they could come in and be a little sloppy, or if they feel like they can come in and play kind of, you know, half-ass defense and be okay, then this is this is a team that's a lot worse off than I thought. And I I guess I continue to give them maybe I don't want to say I give them too much credit because I feel like they sh- they're beyond some of this stuff, but I guess I'm wrong. I guess I'm wrong when it comes to some of this because they very clearly are not able to accept these, these gifts that are given them. No Joel Embiid. Great. You don't have to double team James Harden. You don't have to. What was he going to do? This is, this is the absolute best he was going to do. 45, uh, points in 39 minutes he wasn't going to play all 48 he doesn't have the cardio for that this was the best case scenario and you still felt like you had to double and behind those double teams be a little lazy or be a little lost if the Celtics aren't going to if you're going to double Harden in this situation and get the ball out of his hands then you got to be ready to to, to rotate and understand who's supposed to pick up whom when that happens. When Smart comes off his guy and his guy flies off into the opposite corner, who, who has that? Where's the communication there? But if the Celtics aren't taking this game seriously enough to have that open line of communication over the course of the game, then, then they, deserve, they deserve losses like this. This is this really was a game when they were up 12. This re, that really was their golden opportunity to make their run. Um, but they couldn't do it. Their poor execution late in the game was the next thing. They they um they were outscored 17 to 11 over the last five minutes. So that's that's the clutch time. The Celtics over. The last 316 made one basket. Here we go again, right? Same same situation when the Celtics lost game five to the Hawks, where I lost my, my mind on the podcast. How the Celtics are unable to score for two minutes against this Sixers defense without Embiid, inexcusable. They, they made one basket. One basket and two free throws. They were up four with 316 remaining. And they got one basket, two free throws. And they had one play where Jason Tatum had to force some crap up because they they started their possession really, really late. And another possession where they basically had a 24-second violation and they coughed it up, and Tyrese Maxey gets the ball and goes down the other end and uh, gets basically the, 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 the game-winning dunk. And we can argue, we could easily argue, say, well, that, shouldn't, that should have just been a 24-second violation because the ball wasn't in his hands as the clock went to zeros. That's, a, that's such a bang-bang play. Frankly... If I'm being consistent on what I think and the 24 second violation, 
the team that forces the 24 second violation shouldn't be penalized in that situation because the clock expires. I always say that if, if it happened to the Celtics, if the Celtics uh, had that level of defense and they coughed it up, the other team coughed it up and it's right there in Jason Tatum's hands as the buzzer goes off. Well, Hey man, the defense worked hard for that. The defense worked hard for that turnover and the other team screwed it up, but the defense worked hard for it. I'm not, I can't sit here in good faith and say, Oh, it wasn't in his hands, you know, by, by a two tenths of a second. I don't care. What I care about is the Celtics completely lost track of the, the clock. The Celtics completely lost their minds on that possession. No one wanted to take the shot. No one understood the time, the score, the situation. Who the hell are you guys? I mean, that, that's a childish uh, mistake. That's, some, that's a mistake that you make in high school JV. You can't lose track. In that situation, you can't lose track of the score, the time. The shot clock can't do that. So, honestly, I have no problem with that t- that turnover going to Maxi and going the other way for the dunk. The Celtics deserved that to happen. They should have executed better. But the Celtics continue to play kind of panicky down the stretch. Uh, Jalen Brown said something interesting about that little end of the game there, um, and he sounded he sounded kind of pissed off. He sounded like he was not happy with how. Uh, that went. Uh, I'll talk about that next. First, today's show is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. It's a super fun daily fantasy game. And what makes it extra fun this time around is with uh, with Prize Picks, you can get a million dollars. That's right. They have the new million dollar daily super flex. Every day of the NBA playoffs and the finals, one prize picks user will win a chance to become a millionaire. One entry placed after 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time will be randomly selected each day. And whoever's picked uh, will be given a six-pack flex with the following payouts. Six correct picks is a million dollars. Five correct picks is 80,000. Four correct picks is 16,000. So you got to go to prizepicks.com slash million to opt in for and, and get your full details prizepicks.com slash million to be eligible opt in to be eligible for the million dollar entry once you opt in all you have to do is play the game like normal and you can be the lucky winner now you should go to prizepicks.com and use the promo code locked on to sign up if you're a first time user you get a hundred dollar uh, up to a hundred dollar instant deposit match so whatever you deposit up to a hundred dollars they will match it uh, so use the promo code locked on at prizepicks.com. Very simple daily fantasy. It's you against the projections, and you pick more or less than the projections. So whatever Tatum's points were, uh, twenty whatever, uh, if more or less, if you get it right, you win. Uh, entries can be made in sixty seconds or less. Safe and fast withdrawals. Operational over thirty states in Canada. So it's the Prize Picks app. Go to prizepicks.com. Enter the promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match of up to one. Hundred dollars. I want to thank you for making a Lockdown Celtics your first listen every day. Uh, I would also like for you to go check out Lockdown Sixers. Uh, we had that crossover podcast. I'm sure. I'm sure there will be some gloating on that podcast from D because you know, hey, he's going to say, "Hey, I was right. I knew it. I knew it all along." Uh, I still think what I think about this series. I still think the Celtics. Uh, have the right matchups to win this series. They should win it uh, in six. But, hey, not if they're going to go out there and play like this. Not if they're going to go out there and play this kind of defense and give up 119 points. The Celtics very easily could have scored 120 or more and won this thing. They could have very easily held the Sixers to below 119. They gave up 50% shooting and 45% shooting from three. Uh, and they gave up 12 free throws. They made all 12 free throws. There are opportunities here defensively over and over again to to prevent the Sixers from getting to that 119. And one way you prevent them from getting to 119 is scoring down the stretch, scoring in those last few minutes. 
Jalen Brown was asked if uh, he was he wanted to slow down uh, in the last few minutes, and he said no, no, we we want to we wanted to run. In fact, let me get his full quote here. Um, oh, where did that quote go? Uh, you know, this is part of the. I'm trying to do this live. Okay, here we go. Uh, I wanted to push the pace, but if we're not running. You got to make sure you take care of the basketball. I could have played in transition there, but I don't have any outlets. Nobody's running. It's a bad possession. And you always want to make sure your guys are running with you. And right there, I felt like I was just running by myself. So he's talking about uh, a couple of possessions in the last few minutes where he got the ball. He was It was pushed out to him in transition. He was running, and he went up against you know, the Sixers, did a good job of, get, of getting back. That's a focus for Doc Rivers. He wants his team to get back into transition and in transition and and that limits some of the fast break points. The Celtics only had 14 fast break points. Okay, the Celtics tried to push that pace and in the third quarter Jalen was running and he did that uh you know, get in too deep, push too hard, get get too deep into the, you know, under the basket and then jump and and have no outlets. And I think he was pissed off because a couple of those plays, Jason Tatum just wasn't running all the way down the floor. That's a problem. That is a problem. And I don't know why Tatum's not getting his, his, you know, all the way down the floor, but that's a problem. And if Tatum's not going to run, is then you have to start asking the questions, uh, well, hey, you didn't run down in transition. Is that is that something about, like, fatigue or are you just being lazy? And that's – I think a lot of times Tatum is the guy that she, when you look at somebody did something lazy, uh, Tatum ends up being the guy a lot of times that that does some of this lazy stuff, like not running down or being a little too lazy on defense and not making that, that extra effort. He, he's kind of gotten to that point where he does a lot of great things, but – Every once in a while, he kind of lets up a little too much. That that's problematic. And I think a couple of times when when Jalen was was pushing the ball down the floor, and he looked up and he saw he didn't have everybody with him. You could look at the video a couple of times. It's, it's Tatum that's not getting down the floor. Jalen's very obviously pissed off. You can tell from the tone in the locker room. He and and yeah, they just lost the playoff game, so everybody's pissed off. But this was this was a, a quote. This wasn't something that anybody kind of like led him to this answer. They just asked him about the, the change in, in pace late in the game, and he's the one that said, hey, I wanted to push the ball. I didn't have guys running with me. So how is that going to be received? Now, this is Jalen Brown, and, and he can say it, and he could probably say it in, in the film session, and we'll, there's going to be a Tuesday uh, media availability. So – We'll find out how guys are receiving this, but it's a direct message. He sent a direct message to everybody. If, you know, I wanted to run and, you know, you guys, you guys weren't running with me. And that's, that, that, that is a problem. And, you know, I, I commend, I commend Jalen for, uh, for kind of throwing it out there a little bit. Cause you, you got to make sure that everybody's running the number one criticism of down the stretch is that they slow things up too much. That Jason Tatum three-pointer with a couple minutes to go, they started that possession with 13 on the shot clock. You make one mistake. If one thing doesn't go right, next thing you know, it's like ticking down six, five, four. That, that's where you get yourself into trouble. And the Celtics do that too often. So I think Tatum, just to go down some of the, the final – uh, individual performances. I think Tatum was generally pretty good. 39 points, obviously, is really good. 11 rebounds, five assists. Uh, but he he tailed off in the second half. He was getting to the rim at will in the first half. I mean, the Celtics had 26 points in the paint in the first quarter. I, I think they got away from attacking a little bit too much. Now, Joe Mazzulla after the game said, no, we only shot 26 three-pointers. That's not going to be a recipe for success. I think you should have shot – I mean, there are a couple of those – uh, uh, drives that, that could have been better rim reads and could have been three pointers. So maybe you could say, Hey, they, that would have been 33 pointers, but I think the Celtics needed to attack more. They needed to get, there's no rim protection at the basket. Keep attacking. Keep, keep putting the pressure on that defense, man. 
Uh, I think they need to just keep on doing that. So look, Tatum did a great job of that in the first half, not so much in the second half. Jalen Brown was good in the first quarter and was kind of a nothing after that. He, you know, he had 23 points, but he had about 14 in the first quarter, so nine the rest of the way. That's not going to cut it. He has to be better than that. For all of the talk about, you know, I need these guys running with me and all of that stuff, he needs to be better because he had a few turnovers himself. And he he just – they combined for, what, 62 points, but they could have combined for 80 points in this game. Uh, I just don't think Jalen Brown was good outside of the first quarter. Uh, Horford was okay. He got picked on defensively. A lot of switches onto Harden. He was on Harden on that last – three-pointer, very reminiscent of the Trey Young three-pointer. And it's tough. Horford after the game was like, yeah, you got to watch yourself uh, because he kicks his legs out and you have to be careful how you defend that. So uh, a a tough night defensively, I think, generally for Horford. Um, Derek White was awful in this game, four points, one of five, 0 4 from three. Marcus Smart, I thought, was good. He had six turnovers, right? So the six turnovers – he had a couple early. One, he was getting it to Jason Tatum. Tatum got bumped on his way to the basket, and that threw off the timing. And so that was a turnover on Smart. I don't care about that one necessarily. A uh, couple that dribbled off his leg. One of them wasn't great. Uh, the play at the end of the game where he drove, and I think Paul Reed came over, and he tried to dump it off to Smart. You can see Horford, I mean, uh, Smart after the game. He tried to dump it off to Tatum, I should say. I don't know what I was saying. Uh, he tried to dump it off to Tatum. Uh, you can see him after the game was just uh, after the play is like, uh, shoot that, shoot that. So uh, he knows he should have shot that. He, but Smart was the only reason why the Celtics even had a four point lead, why the Celtics even had opportunities to to win this game. Smart took over down the stretch and was getting to the line, was getting to the rim. So I thought I got to give Smart credit for. Um, attacking and and kind of being the catalyst there down the stretch. Uh, Malcolm Brogdon was great again in the first half. Not so, you know, everybody kind of tailed off in the second half. Uh, 20 points, 9 of 16 shooting. Robert Williams, I got to go look at Robert Williams again. He played 20 minutes, and um, I think he could have done better. The Grant Williams minutes early on, I think this is this should be a big Grant Williams series, but I think with Embiid, I don't think he's a guy that – I don't think Grant's a guy that can just go in there and play um, Harden one-on-one the whole time. His his strength is being able to switch from Embiid to Harden for a, you know, for a couple of seconds and then switch to somebody else. So uh, Grant, only four minutes. Uh, I, the zone, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to watch the zone again. The zone continues to bother the Celtics. They, they they love to shoot over the top of the zone. I think part of why they got a little bit uh, passive, it was they, they for for all of Joe Missoula's, oh, we didn't shoot enough three-pointers, I thought they, they tried to shoot over the top of the zone. And they had one play late where Horford got to the middle and they sent Smart as a baseline cutter. And, and Horford got it to smart, and he got the layup and the and one. That's how you bust the zone. Get somebody to the middle of it and 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 go from there. Every once in a while, obviously, you, want to, you can shoot over the top of a zone. There are gaps that you can shoot, but that's not the only thing you should do. Now, I believe in getting someone to the middle, collapse the zone, and then have that person make your read, which means that person has to be one of your best passers. So that means it's Al Horford. It could be Jason Tatum. It could be Marcus Smart. Those three guys can get to the middle, that free throw line. When they decide to go 2-3, should be easy to recognize. Missoula after the game said, yeah, we kind of got caught up trying to figure out if it was zone or if it was a man. That should be easy to recognize. If you guys can't process that they're playing a zone right away, then I got to question your ability to process the game. You can tell the zone pretty quickly. Even if you miss it the first time down, somebody on this bench, somebody on this team is going to be like, hey, that was a zone. You can figure that out pretty quickly. And then you go and you get somebody to the middle, collapse the zone, attack the gaps, collapse the zone, get somebody to the middle, get that person the ball. Horford, Smart, Tatum, your three best passers. 
get get them to get that the defense collapse. Everybody's going to converge on the ball and have that person make the right read. Send a baseline cutter behind that defense. Once that ball hits that zone, everybody's going to be looking at it. By nature, everybody's going to be looking at the ball. Send a cutter baseline, get it to one of your passers, get that pass. Even if that play, pass gets through a guy and the, and the lane is cut off, just dribble through and get somebody out, and you, then you can kick it out to a, a wing for a three-pointer. The, the zone defense, a problem. It should not hurt the Celtics as much as it does. It really is bothersome that it hurts them as much as it does. But it does. I'll look at a lot of this stuff. I'll, I'll do my film study, and I will come back tomorrow with a, a closer look at some of the things that the Celtics can do better. And assuming that Joel Embiid is out, what the Celtics can do better to avoid a repeat of this game and not let the other guys, Melton, Maxi, I know the other guys kind of hurt the Celtics. That's all coming up tomorrow. Uh, for now, I'm going to wrap it up here at the Garden where the Celtics lose game one. Not the end of the world. Not the end of the world. So it's frustrating, but still, obviously, the Celtics can win game two and and go, go take a game in or two in Philly and come back here in a good position. I think the Celtics can go and win. I would not be surprised with their backs against the wall. Celtics not great with prosperity, but they're great with adversity. I can see them coming out strong in game two. I can see them coming out strong in game three. And then who knows from there? how they're going to how they're going to feel about things but we'll see anyway i'll be back tomorrow with more uh so if you're new and you're still here that means i you like the show i, I hope and uh you know hit that subscribe button shout out to all the sixers fans who i know are going to be flooding the comments i know i i know it's coming so hey whatever that's fine uh i expect it welcome aboard and for the rest of you, I hope you share the podcast, tell your friends and family they should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day.